<clears throat> Today we're talking about the 2019 Hague Convention, which was ratified by the United Kingdom to allow the recognition and enforcement of cross-border judgments. Back in June 2021, so six months after Brexit, we published our article, How to Enforce Civil and Commercial Judgments After Brexit, which explained and concluded that the United Kingdom had basically no solid legal framework in place to efficiently recognize and enforce civil and commercial judgments handed down in a European Union member state. The opposite was true too, whereby UK civil and commercial judgments became difficult to recognize and enforce in any member states of the EU post-Brexit. So without the 2007 Lugano Convention, which the UK has still not joined, the default position after the Brexit transition date of the 1st of January 2021 was that jurisdiction and enforcement of judgments for new cases issued in the UK would be determined by the domestic law of each UK jurisdiction, i.e. the common law of England and Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland, respectively. Supplemented, this domestic law of each UK jurisdiction, supplemented by the Hague Convention dated 30th of June 2005 on choice of court agreements. Quite a dreadful tableau, if you ask me. Not at all conducive to efficient and smooth enforcement of EU judgments in the UK and of UK judgments in the EU. However, a ray of hope is now shining on the whole area of enforcement of cross-border judgments because the UK recently ratified the 2019 Hague Convention. So what changes and when and how? Let's have a look at a short history and rationale for the adoption of the 2019 Hague Convention. We've Ever increasing globalization and the growth of cross-border interactions of all kinds between civil and commercial parties, disputes are an inevitable occurrence. In the 1990s, the Hague Conference on Private International Law recognized that an effective and smooth regime for international transactions would require tools that enable swift and uncomplicated recognition and enforcement of foreign judgments. So this Hague Conference on Private International Law is abbreviated to HCCH, Hague, Hague Conference on Private International Law, HCCH. In the sphere of arbitration, the quintessential instrument that facilitates the recognition and enforcement of foreign arbitral awards is the 1958 New York Convention, the New York Convention. The HCCH initial aim in the 1990s was to create a counterpart to the New York Convention that would enable straightforward recognition and enforcement of foreign judgments. However, the endeavor proved rather unsuccessful initially due to a lack of consensus on an array of divisive issues. Consequently, the HCCH's ambition had to be curtailed so that the HCCH temporarily is settled to adopt the Hague Convention dated 30th of June 2005 on choice of court agreements. The aim of the 2005 Hague Convention is to ensure the effectiveness of choice of court agreements by commercial parties, as well as to facilitate recognition and enforcement of judgments rendered under such agreements. The HCCH hence viewed the 2005 Hague Convention as an important achievement, but one that required additional building blocks. In 2011, the HCCH hoped again to look into the possibility of drafting a global instrument on matters relating to jurisdiction and the recognition and enforcement of judgments in civil and commercial matters. Eventually, the lack of consensus on divisive matters was overcome, and the much-needed additional building blocks were finally added in the form of the convention dated 2nd of July 2019 on the recognition and enforcement of foreign judgments in civil and commercial matters. The 
a number of ratification of both the 2005 Hague Convention and the 2019 Hague Convention remains low. Indeed, the former boasts nine ratifications. Albania, the EU, covering the European territory of all member states except Denmark. Denmark is also a ratification country of the 2005 Hague Convention. Mexico, Moldova, Montenegro, Singapore, the Ukraine, and the UK. While the latter has only been ratified by four countries, the EU, except Denmark, Ukraine, the UK, and Uruguay. That being said, both Hague Conventions have been ratified by the EU, which inflates the number of countries as there are 27 EU member states in which these two instruments apply. So what just happened? Well, the 2019 Hague Convention got ratified by the UK, that's what. On the 27th of June 2024, the UK ratified the 2019 Hague Convention with 1st of July 2025 being the expected date of its entry into force. This is a significant development and major improvement for cross-border litigation from and to the UK. While part of the EU, the judgments of the UK courts benefited from the Brussels One Regulation Regime. More precisely, Article 36.1 of the Brussels One Regulation provides that a judgment given in an EU member state shall be recognized in the other member states without any special procedures being required. However, the application of Brussels One Regulation in relation to the UK stopped on the 1st of January 2021 upon Brexit. What that meant in practice was that from that date onwards, the recognition and enforcement of the judgments of the UK courts in the EU would be way more challenging and depending on the laws of each EU member state. Given that English courts have historically enjoyed the status of preferred dispute resolution forum for commercial parties across all four corners of the world, the sudden impossibility to recognize and enforce judgments of the English courts in the EU posed a very serious threat to this status. The UK's response was to join the 2005 Hague Convention on the 1st of January 2021 and then the 2019 Hague Convention on the 27th of June 2024. Indeed, when applicable, the 2019 Hague Convention will streamline and widen the scope of the process of recognition and enforcement of UK judgments in the EU, except Denmark, which is not bound by the 2019 Hague Convention, and vice versa, alongside the 2005 Hague Convention, which the UK acceded in its own right on the 1st of January 2021. As abundantly explained in our article, How to Enforce Civil and Commercial Judgments After Brexit, and here I refer you to our excellent website, crefovi.com, and for the French version, crefovi.fr, if you would like to browse and uh, listen to our uh, webinar on how to enforce civil and commercial judgments after Brexit. So as abundantly explained in our article, How to Enforce Civil and commercial judgments after Brexit, the 2005 Hague Convention presents many weaknesses and idiosyncrasies which are not conducive to the smooth and efficient recognition and enforcement of all cross-border judgments in the UK and the EU. For example, the 2005 Hague Convention applies to final decisions on the merit but not to interim provisional or protective relief orders, while Article 8.3 of the 2005 Hague Convention allows an English court to postpone or refuse recognition if the foreign judgment is subject to appeal in the country of origin. Also, there are two major contentious issues with regard to the material and temporal scope of the 2005 Hague Convention, and the EU's and UK's positions differ on those subjects. The first area of contention relates to the material scope of the 2005 Hague Convention and more specifically revolves around what is an exclusive choice of court agreement. 
In particular, the UK thinks that asymmetric and unilateral choice of court agreements, such as the loan market association standard forms of English law governed finance documents, which give one contracting party, usually the lender, the choice of a range of courts in which to sue while limiting the other party, usually the borrower, to the courts of a single jurisdiction, usually the lender's home state, should be regarded as exclusive within the scope of a 2005 Hague Convention. So the point is that the UK thinks that a symmetric or unilateral choice of courts agreement, such as the Loan Market Association Standard Forms, it should be regarded as exclusive, as I said, and therefore would fall within the scope of the 2005 Hague Convention. But EU case law and EU member states, as well as academic commentary, all suggest the opposite, i.e. that asymmetric or a unilateral choice of court agreements are not exclusive and therefore outside the scope of a 2005 Hague Convention. The second area of contention relates to the temporal scope of the 2005 Hague Convention. When did the 2005 Hague Convention enter into force in the UK? Pursuant to Article 16 of the 2005 Hague Convention, such convention applies to exclusive choice of court agreements concluded after its entry into force for the state of a chosen court. There is a difference of opinion as to the application of a 2005 Hague Convention to exclusive jurisdiction clauses in favour of UK courts entered into between 1st of October 2015 and 1st of January 2021, when the UK was a party to the 2005 Hague Convention by virtue of its EU membership. Indeed, the EU states that the 2005 Hague Convention only applied between the EU and the UK to exclusive trust of court agreements concluded after the convention enters into force in the UK as a party on its own right to the convention, therefore from the 1st of January 2021. However, the UK Ministry of Justice guidance set out that the 2005 Hague Convention will continue to apply to the UK without interruption from its original entry into force date of 1st of October 2015, which is when the EU became a signatory to the 2005 Hague Convention, at which time the Convention also entered into force in the UK by virtue of the UK being an EU member state. So how can the 2019 Hague Convention iron out those differences in views between the EU and the UK and ensure that most, if not all, cross-border civil and commercial judgments can be recognized and enforced on both sides of a channel without any hiccups. Let's have a look at the geographical scope of the 2019 Hague Convention in the UK and beyond. The UK's ratification of the 2019 Hague Convention extends only to judgments of the courts of England and Wales, i.e. for the moment, not those from Scotland and Northern Ireland. However, transcripts of the UK Parliament discussions from the 21st of May 2024 suggest that ratification is going to be extended further since the Northern Irish and Scottish administrations appear to support the 2019 Hague Convention. End of the 2019 Hague Convention, a judgment which is handed down in one contracted state, provided certain conditions are met, and its specific exclusions not met, can be recognized and enforced in another contracting state without the courts of this other contracted state reviewing the merits of a case, unless it is manifestly incompatible with the public policy of the other contracting state. So if a party issues a claim in the courts of England and Wales after 1st of July 2025, under an agreement that contains a non-exclusive or asymmetric jurisdiction clause, then the judgment will be enforceable in the EU subject to the provisions of a 2019 Hague Convention. The 2019 Hague Convention will apply to judgments in civil and commercial proceedings, for example, where the contracting state in which the judgment is handed down is also the place of performance of contractual obligations or the place of administration of a trust. However, for states such as Switzerland, Norway, and Iceland that have not ratified the 2019 Hague Convention, domestic private international law rules will continue to apply to the cross-border recognition 
and enforcement of judgments from the English courts. Some of the key provisions of the 2019 Hague Convention relate to the recognition and enforcement of judgments in civil and commercial matters. And while the terms civil and commercial are not defined in the 2019 Hague Convention, they will have to be approached from an autonomous perspective, given that Article 20 requires that the convention be interpreted by observing its international character and the need to promote its uniform application. Article 1.2 of the Hague Convention from 2019 makes clear that the convention shall apply to the recognition and enforcement in one contracting state, i.e. the requested state, of a judgment given by a court of another contracting state, i.e. the state of origin. The broad scope of application established in Article 1 of 2019 Hague Convention is then narrowed down by the specific exclusions listed in Article 2. Among other things, the Convention will not apply to the status and legal capacity of natural persons, maintenance obligations, other family law matters, wills and succession, insolvency, composition, the carriage of passengers and goods, defamation, privacy, and intellectual property. Interim measures are also explicitly carved out from the definition of judgment, meaning that the 2019 Hague Convention cannot be used to enforce interim injunctions, for example, freezing orders. So that, that issue with the 2005 Hague Convention is still not sorted about interim orders, still not sorted with the 2019 Hague Convention. Once the judgment is found to be within the scope of the 2019 Hague Convention, Article 4 comes into play by providing that the judgment rendered by a court of one contracting state shall be recognized and enforced in another contracting state, with the court in the latter contracting state not being allowed to review this judgment on merits beyond what is necessary to apply the convention. Article 5 of the 2019 Hague Convention puts forth an exhaustive list of jurisdictional filters or eligibility criteria, such as the habitual residence of a person against whom the recognition and enforcement of a judgment is sought. If a person in question was habitually resident in the contracting state at the time at which they became a party to the proceedings before a court of that contracting state, so the state of origin, then this factual scenario will serve as a jurisdictional filter that triggers the obligation on the part of other contracting states to recognize the ensuing judgment. Indeed, these jurisdictional filters, such as the defendant's habitual residence, principal place of business or branch, agency or other establishment, can be described as connecting points that tie the case and the judgment to the contracting state, from which the judgment originated in a way to trigger the obligation on the part of another contracting state to recognize it. Article 7 of the 2019 Hague Convention provides for grounds to refuse or postpone the recognition and enforcement of judgments, even though they fall within the scope of a convention and have a relevant jurisdictional filter. Indeed, Article 7.1 allows, but does not make it compulsory, for a court to refuse recognition and enforcement of a judgment obtained by fraud, or which contravenes public policy of a court's requested state, or which is not enforceable in this state of origin, for example. Meanwhile, Article 7.2 of the Convention provides that a court may refuse or postpone recognition and enforcement of a judgment in a parallel litigation case that is also pending before the courts of a recognizing contracting state, i.e. international lease pendants. There's actually a description uh, definition of lease pendants on our article, which is published on crifrevy.com and also the French version on crifrevy.fr, so don't hesitate to have a look at our websites. Some of the key provisions of from the 2019 Hague Convention relate to documents and procedural rules. 
The party seeking recognition or enforcement must provide a certified copy of a judgment and a certificate from the court in the state of origin confirming the judgment's enforceability. Translations into the language of a requested state may also be required. The 2019 Hague Convention provides that the procedure for recognition and enforcement is governed by the law of the requested state, but that the court of the requested state must act expeditiously. In England and Wales, the procedure for recognition and enforcement is set out in Rule 74 of the Civil Procedure Rules. This Rule 74 was recently amended to facilitate the implementation of the 2019 Hague Convention, and the amendments will take effect on the 1st of July 2025. To conclude, the ratification of the 2019 Hague Convention by the UK is definitely a step in the right direction to restore English courts as some of the most efficient in the world and to simplify and expedite the process of recognition and enforcement of judgments between the contracting states. But this ratification of the 2019 Hague Convention only partially addresses the enforcement gap left by the UK's departure from the EU. In particular, the ending of the applicability of a 2007 Lugano Convention applicable to the states from the European Free Trade Association, EFTA, so that's Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway and Switzerland. So the ending of the applicability of the 2007 Lugano Convention applicable to the states from the EFTA remains unaddressed at least for as long as these EFTA states are outside the Hague framework. So which dispute resolution process will have the upper end when the 2019 Hague Convention enters into force in England and Wales between arbitration and litigation? With the adoption of the 2019 Hague Convention, and now that the UK and France will both be covered by the Convention, two contracting states whose capital cities, London and Paris, are the two powerhouses of international arbitration, can the application of the 2019 Hague Convention have a direct or indirect impact on international arbitration cases? No, since Article 2.3 of the 2019 Hague Convention provides that this convention law shall not apply to arbitration and related proceedings. But can the 2019 Hague Convention be a game changer in the sense of increasing the attractiveness of litigation at the expense of arbitration in the domain of international commercial disputes? Not really, because arbitral awards are still easier to enforce thanks to the New York Convention. And since commercial parties also value the possibility afforded by arbitration only for the parties to choose their own decision maker. Arbitration also gets higher levels of privacy and confidentiality, allows for a higher degree of flexibility and can often times be less expensive and time consuming than going to court. Even if and when the 2019 Hague Convention reaches the same number of contracting states that the New York Convention, arbitration would still hold sway over litigation due to these comparative advantages. Moreover, while the 2019 Hague Convention does make the movement of court judgments across borders significantly less cumbersome, it is still a far cry from the liberal regime created by the New York Convention. Given the 2019 Hague Convention's reliance on jurisdictional filters to amplify the conditions required for a judgment to be recognized and enforced, there will always be a higher likelihood on average that a court judgment will narrowly fail to satisfy the requirements of a 2019 Hague Convention than it will be for an arbitral award not to successfully pass the enforceability test that is the New York Convention. Thank you so much for listening. We are so glad that you are back in line with us for this podcast. Don't hesitate to like our podcast, Lawfully Creative, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. We are everywhere on social media. So it's Lawfully Creative, which is produced by our law firm, Crifovi, and I am the host, Annabelle Gaberti. So Thank you so much for now, and I shall be back in touch with you soon.